Well, here we are, six months into 2021. I'm sure the worst of the scalper pandemic must be over by now. Let's uh, let's just have a look outside. Well, shit. Guess we better try another old graphics card then. Vega lives on in the mind of budget gamers today as the heart of AMD's integrated graphics. But at one point back in 2017, Vega was actually a graphics card. Two, in fact. You might wonder why I feel I have to tell you this. It seems pretty fucking obvious, actually, but hold on a second. I, like you, watch the likes of Hammer on Box and Linus Tech Tips, just for the articles, of course. And yes, I've seen all the videos about the RX Vega 56 and 64, so of course I know they exist. But they're so rarely seen on sale these days for anything less than an utterly obscene price that I sort of forget about them. Well, this Sapphire Nitro Plus model of the Vega 64 popped up for a comparatively reasonable price, and I bought it as much for the novelty as anything. Plus, I'm a sucker for Sapphire cards. In all honesty, this video doesn't really belong in the Scalper Pandemic series. Even before I test it, I can see that this is one of the cards that seem to have skyrocketed in price, so I don't really expect many of you are thinking about picking one up in 2021. If you have a Vega 64 already, or by some miracle can get a more appropriate price considering its age, you might want to know how it stacks up in 2021. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm curious about that myself. I really don't know what to expect from this card in modern games, so I guess the only answer is to pop it into my reasonably priced gaming PC and, uh, uh, well, hold on just a second there. You see, the reasonably priced PC is built in a slightly larger than average M80X case from Aerocool, which hasn't given me any trouble fitting cards in until now. So, in a slight deviation from my normal procedure, I'm using an open test bench, aka cardboard box, with the Ryzen 3 4350G. This single CCX design is theoretically a little more powerful than my usual Ryzen 3 3100, though that doesn't seem to be reflected in the TimeSpy score. So, sometimes I capture my videos out of order compared to when I upload them, so this footage is actually from my first ever game of Enlisted. I mention this by way of an excuse as to why I'm running around like a moron, not shooting anyone. 1080 at ultra settings resulted in a 96 FPS average and 65 FPS 1% lows. While I'm on the subject of games at which I suck ass, Apex Legends at 1080 high returns an average frame rate of 125 and lows of 90. I don't think it would take much in the way of tweaking to get this to run at 144 FPS if you've got a good enough monitor. If you prefer taking in the art style and graphical splendour of the latest Unreal Engine, playing Fortnite at 1080 with epic settings will give you an excellent 95 FPS average and 44 FPS 1% lows. If you prefer to win matches, then dropping to competitive settings pushes that up over 210 FPS with lows of 146, perfect for a high refresh monitor. This game, man. <laughs> this game. I, I actually ended up switching my RAM out from the usual 8GB kit to 16 gigs for this test, which by the way is now a permanent change to the RPG PC going forwards, and it still crashed on me, either as I deployed my parachute or shortly after landing. Not in the warm-up either, just the main game. After a frustrating few hours of assorted weird error messages, it eventually turned out to be the page file again. After deleting it and creating a new one, the game now runs smooth as butter on the Vega 64, with averages of 98 and lows of 65. 
looking absolutely stunning at 1080 with settings on favour quality, Horizon Zero Dawn plays very well on the Vega 64. I saw averages of 74 and 1% lows of 55. Dropping to balanced might keep that over 60, but I'd personally be inclined to stick with the higher visual fidelity. With quality set to high, the Valhalla benchmark comes in at 70 FPS with lows of 45. My past experience of the recent AC games suggests this is pretty acceptable, but if you insist on a constant 60 FPS experience, you might have to drop a few settings. There are games that just run well, and then there's the medium. Sometimes you'll be walking along enjoying the 1080 resolution and high quality settings, then there'll be a scene transition or a crossover event into split screen play, and your frame times spike. Averages hover around the mid 40s, and generally lows are around the 30s. Sometimes however it will send your 1% lows into the single digits. Cyberpunk performs pretty well, actually. Certain parts of town with lots of holograms will still challenge the card, but averages at 1080 high are pretty close to 60. Lows, however, dip below 30, particularly in those aforementioned tough areas. Forza Horizon 4's canned benchmark informs me that the Vega 64 could potentially score an average of 164 FPS and lows of 141. However, the CPU is holding the GPU back in this instance, leaving us pretty much locked at a paltry 140 FPS. Tragic, I know. Valheim's performance is still a bit perplexing. With visuals turned up to the max, the Vega 64 hits an average of 65 and lows of 45, which is higher than the RX 6700 XT got at the same settings. So, it turns out the Vega 64 is still something of a beast in 2021, at least for 1080 and probably some 1440 gaming. Hands up, who was expecting this? Okay, well, quite a lot of you apparently. Fair enough. Well, for everyone else, how's that for a conclusion? At one point you could get this card for two to three hundred pounds, and at those prices it would have been a pretty decent option today. The problem, of course, is that it's been the victim of low availability and its own mining success since practically day one. Is it worth... Uh, £600? Of course not, and no other four-year-old graphics card is either. If you've still got one, should you be thinking about upgrading? Well, if by some miracle you can get an RTX 3060 or 3060Ti, or RX 6700 XT for the actual SRP, then you're in luck. You could probably sell your Vega 64 and actually make a profit. In reality though, you should probably hold onto this card until things return to normal, as it really is a bloody good card. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.